All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a little bit of a different type of video style of video because I'm going to be doing more talking and more of an explanation than I usually do. I know during my workouts, I like to get through my workout and then possibly do some explanations in between. But today is going to be more thorough, more comprehensive look at how to lose body fat. So we have seven topics here. So here, the first topic is explain keto and its macros. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you guys what my macros are and how you should calculate those. So that's, that leads me to two, which is explaining how to calculate them. Three is I'm gonna explain the benefits to strength athletes as well as endurance athletes because you guys know that I'm a soccer player. So I wanna show you guys how to apply it to both. I'll explain why I use keto. So that's my personal experience with it and then Number five is the application of the and the type of foods that you should be eating. I'll explain what I eat, each meal and stuff like that. Number six, caloric intake. And then the last topic is fat, uh, such as body fat percentage. So how low body fat percentage you, you are compared to fat and foods, whether they're correlated, whether they're not, how they correlate with each other and uh, how they're different. So let's just get right into the video and I'll start explaining the, the number one thing. All right, so here we have our three macronutrient categories. We have our fats. So these are only healthy fats. These are not trans fats. These are not coming from burgers. These are not coming from French fries, none of that. Then we have 70 to 75%. So this diet is high fat. It's mostly composed of those fats. Next, we have protein. Protein is going to be 20 to 25% of our diet, which is extremely important. Obviously, if you're an athlete, no matter whether it's endurance or strength, you need to rebuild the muscle, you need to repair. So that's what our protein is used for. So it's moderate protein. And then the last thing that we have here is carbohydrate, which we only keep to 5%, which is low carb. So basically what this does is that it allows your body to become more efficient in burning fat as your fuel rather than burning carbohydrate. Now being an endurance athlete, fat burns much slower than carbohydrate does. So you're able to last much longer with less enormous quantities of food, I, I should say. Because, because each of these categories have percentages, we may not know how to calculate that percentage, how much should you be having a day? How much fat should you be having a day? How many grams? How much protein should you be having a day in grams? And how much carbohydrate you should be having? Let's start off with the most simple one. Carbohydrate is extremely low carb. If you're, if you're attempting to lose body fat, uh, you wanna drop the carbs as low as possible. Still keeping some from those leafy greens, but that's about the only carbohydrate that we're gonna have. Usually I keep my carbohydrate under 20 grams net carbs, and I keep it below 30 grams total carbs. So. Basically what this does is your body is holding on to less water and it's constantly flushing out minerals like sodium and potassium. So basically to replenish these, we're going to be, we're going to be working on uh, keeping sodium high. So a lot of times Celtic sea salt, stuff like that is, it's important and you can use supplements to, uh, to help with potassium and stuff like that, but getting it from vegetables is definitely one of your best options. So next we have protein, which is 20, 25% of your diet, which is moderate, considered moderate. Protein is one of the difficult subjects with ketogenic diet because it really depends on who you are and how your body can react to it. With me personally, as I've gone over time, I started off to get into the state of ketosis, which is when your body is able to uh, create ketones and use fat as fuel. Um, to get into that state, I kept my carbs extremely low, but I also kept my protein lower than what I have it now. To, uh, as a general rule to calculate your protein, you want it to be 0 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Let's say that you are 200 pounds. Let's say you're 200 pounds. So you want to have your 0 .0 0 0.8 would only be 160 grams of protein. Whereas if you're on the higher end, you're going to be 1.2, which is actually 240 grams of protein rather. Uh, so it really depends. You have, to, you have to test it out and see what your threshold is. So when you're doing this, the extremely important part of the ketogenic diet is testing your ketones. We use different uh, measurements and different ways of analyzing how much ketones are in our bloodstream and our breath and all of that to decide whether or not we're in ketosis. There's different, there's different measurements, there's different tools. You can just search them up. You'll find them online, different uh, resources. But it's a great way of knowing whether or not you're in ketosis and whether or not you're going to get the benefits. Don't, don't be too discouraged if you're not in that state within the first couple weeks because it does take four to six weeks to get into the uh, state of ketosis rather than uh, what a lot of people want is to be right in that state right away and have all those benefits. The likelihood of you being put into that state, into the ketosis state, is way much higher if you develop a good diet and you're not cheating at all. 
that's that's a huge thing to losing body fat is that with me i do not cheat i create clean sheets which are more like uh snacks where we use sweeteners like stevia which is a natural well which is a sweetener that's doesn't have the same insulin response and blood sugar response blood glucose response as uh, normal sugar wood or maltodextrin or sucralose wood so just be careful with those two is that you don't want to see any of those secret sugars a lot of companies put them in this stuff with with fat we want to keep our fat high we want it 70 to 75 percent which is high fat the whole time so we're looking for all the foods that we can that are not too lean a lot of people assume if when you're on the ketogenic diet that you're in a caloric deficit i'm only 120 125 pounds right now and I'm having 2,800 to 3,000 calories a day, depending on whether or not it's a high protein day. So you wanna make sure that when you're using fat, you're getting enough of it. If so, a lot of people with calories is that they get, they go into the ketogenic diet and they either, they go too low fat and too high protein because they're not getting enough fatty foods and stuff like that, that they're actually are in a caloric deficit. So make sure you're getting enough fats. And then on the other side of that, people go too high fat, too low protein, so their body's not able to regenerate and reboot as a resting to develop the muscle that you want. A lot of people experience the quote unquote keto flu when they're adapting and they're getting into that state of ketosis, which can take four to six weeks and then months even to get the full benefits of that you really want. And I've been on it for three years and I've, I've practiced it and I've developed, I've found my protein threshold. So being a kid, I know that I can go higher in my protein because I don't want to. I don't want to limit my protein because I want, don't want to limit my growth in any way. So I eat to satiation, which is what you're supposed to do on this diet. And whether or not you increase your protein more, you really have to test. The next thing I'm going to talk about is explaining the benefits of the diet. What what does it really help you with? So I, I know there's been tons of studies that show, and people people test this diet out. They do they do let's say a couple months on it. And um, I know there is some studies out there that say that it is bad, but a lot of the times these studies aren't are incorrect because they're only doing the first two to three week period, maybe even maybe even a month, where the, well, a lot of times the patients aren't even adapted into a state of ketosis, so they're not getting the benefits that that you actually would after uh, like two months or even three months or even so on. But the benefit for me is that I am a soccer player, right? And I I personally I don't do well on carbs, I feel lethargic, I feel heavy, I don't feel like I can run as long, I don't feel like I can run as fast. This fat burns slower, so when I'm in a 90 minute game or if I'm in a two hour workout, I'm gonna be able to last that full time because this fat is still burning to the end of the workout. One of the last things we're gonna talk about is what food specifically I eat. I wanna give you guys some options because a lot of people, why the reason they fail at diets is that it's too inconvenient or it's too, it's, the food's not available to them. and. I understand that there is some cases where you're unable to get this food, but there's always alternatives and there's always ways to find good sources where you can uh, fuel your body and eventually lose that body fat that you're wanting to lose. I'll start with the meats. So we want good high fatty meats so that we're able to use the fat efficiently. A good option for this would be bacon. I use this in the morning. So breakfast options, bacon and eggs. That's what I use every morning pretty much. And it, it, it's a great food because the bacon is so high fat and the eggs together, they're decently high calories. So your body's still fueling itself consistently, even if you do that before workout, because I work out in the morning. So my pre-workout meal is usually these bacon, this bacon and eggs. And then I'll have something on side, maybe an avocado or, and then plus the leafy greens. So I'll have spinach, kale, these things, even broccoli, just as another vegetable to use. But that's usually my morning. Whereas when I'm going into uh, lunch or dinner time, either one of these, I like to use uh, good solid red meats. Like I have the steak or, and then uh, as I said, uh, also another one that was just a little bit leaner, but it's still okay, is ground beef. I have ground beef sometimes. And then also all for my fish and my for my omega-3s, uh, all omegas actually, I, uh, I have salmon. So uh, so that's also a good option if you enjoy salmon. I'll also use other meats like pork chop. Pork chop's very good. I mean, it's very fatty, so I love it. I enjoy it. I'll have ribs, the meat by itself, and then you can find sugar-free barbecue sauces and stuff like that that taste good but are still don't have the same glucose response, like blood glucose response that something with sugar would or something with maltodextrin and all those quote-unquote secret sugars that you have to be careful about would have. As far as, as, far as vegetables, as I've mentioned, I use... Uh, this is my 5% carbohydrate. This is what is makes up my carbohydrate. It's usually spinach, broccoli, green beans, kale, 
Brussels sprouts, and these are all great options to use for for getting enough of uh, the vegetables that you need. So all of these different foods are options. Um, as I was saying for the drinks, let's get back to that. The drinks, I find, I, I mean, I drink water regularly, obviously to stay hydrated, but I found multiple, two different drinks that I specifically like, which is one is Zevia. It's a, it's a healthy pot or like a soda, whatever you call it. Um, that's basically carbonated and sweetened with stevia. So this is this is healthy to your body. It's not it's not getting the same glucose response or anything. You're not spiking insulin, so your body's gonna be able to process it better, and you're not getting you're not gonna gain any fat, any body fat that you don't like or you don't want to when you're trying to lose body fat. Obviously, another drink that I use is almond milk. So almond milk does have a little bit of carbohydrate in it, but it's not. It's very minimal. It's and there's fiber in it too. So what we're gonna do is we use that almond milk and we put stevia, that a lot of times I use the chocolate almond milk and put stevia in it, as you saw in my previous video, and that's a great option for another thing that tastes like chocolate milk. If you find that you're having cravings for a sweeter treat or a sweeter drink, that's a great option. With body fat, this is actually called adipose tissue rather than being uh, saturated fats. So there is a huge difference because your body can run off of fat that you're eating, saturated fats, that you're eating these good healthy fats that you want to be putting into your body and a lot of people are deprived of them so they're not they're not able to use them as fuel but uh that's not exactly the same thing as body fat because your body fat is tissue that's related to what foods you eat that are going into your body what's fueling your body what's what's being uh efficiently used with the ketogenic diet with the the fat is being efficiently used and there's no extra that's going to be put into your like fat stores it's a huge thing when you're thinking about this that body fat is not the same as saturated fats so they're not exactly the same a lot of times the industry will try to put low fat on this and it's depriving people and it's making them making them unhealthy because they're not able to get the fats that they need for for brain cognitive health and and other like muscle building and endurance training and stuff like that so so it's very important that you don't try to connect the two and don't think, don't believe that low fat is a good thing when high fat, high healthy fats, the saturated fats that come from the meats and the avocados and stuff like that is, is what's good for you. So uh, to, to kind of close this off, I've, I've, I wanted to kind of teach you guys an insight, give you guys an insight to what I do, what I, how I live my life. So the good thing about the ketogenic, uh, ketogenic diet is that most people will will give up on diets early, but this this diet has such satiating foods and such filling foods that even when you are in a caloric deficit, you still feel full because the fats will fill your body up more than the carbohydrate or even the protein will. If you didn't know, fat is more calorically dense than protein and carbohydrate. So our protein and our carbohydrates are only four calories per gram of protein or carbs. And then our fat is actually nine calories. So it's near, it's more than double the amount of calories you're getting. So you're gonna feel satiated faster, which is actually, which can be a good thing if you're trying to cut down. The other thing is that uh, a lot of people think you need to eat six, six, five, six meals a day, even seven ridiculous, because they want to uh, build that muscle. But I can, I can confidently tell you that I've built muscle on this diet, eating two to three meals a day. and. I know you may think, wow, that's that's crazy because if you're if you've been uh, if you've been told that you should be eating six to seven meals so that you're able to get enough calories, then um, you need to change that mindset. You need to start thinking about what you're putting into your body, not just stuffing stuff down. When I'm eating, I'm thinking about okay, so this fat, this protein here, this carbohydrate here, all of that together, how it's gonna connect to my calorie intake and how it's gonna give my body energy so that. When I'm training, when I'm working out, I'm able to get a good pump, I'm able to tear the muscle down properly, and then when I'm sleeping or I'm on my off days, then I'm able to rebuild the muscle with enough protein. So use use this diet to your benefit. Think think about what you're eating. Start to think about how each thing affects your body. Test test it out. Taste maybe you work better on carbohydrate. That's fine. I'm not saying that's that you can't use carbs. But for me personally, and this is how I how I lost body fat, how I got down to such a low body fat percentage while gaining muscle still is that I cut down my carbohydrates and I increased my fats a lot and I've just seen enormous benefits. I've seen enormous amounts of strength increases and stuff like that to, to help me progress further in my sport of soccer and my sport of bodybuilding, my two passions. 
So if you're trying to lose body fat, I strongly recommend that you do your research into the ketogenic diet. This isn't, this isn't everything you need to know because there's much more uh, that I'm probably going to explain in future videos, but you have to, even when you do your research, you have to test it out yourself because each person responds differently to the ketogenic diet, to, to carbohydrates, to protein, to fat. So you want to test out and see what your thresholds are for each so that your body's able to develop the, to the best of its ability. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this video. I, I tried to share as much information as I could for the time being without getting you guys too bored. But um, if you want uh, to ever contact me about the ketogenic diet, just send me a DM. I could ask, I can answer some questions on Instagram or I believe on YouTube there's some private messaging now. So send me a message I'll, or an email. Uh, you can email me at tristanleeofficial at gmail.com and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible with any tips and stuff like that that I can have. And if not, then just wait for the next video. It'll be coming out in due time and I'll talk more about the topic. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click the subscribe button. We're at 180, around 180, just over 180,000 subscribers and I'm super grateful. It's been crazy the amount I've gone up the, just in the past month really. I've gone up almost 100,000 subscribers. So I appreciate all of your guys' support. Make sure you click that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, click the like button. Drop a comment if you have a question. I'll be responding to comments. I've been doing that more on my Instagram and my YouTube. And you guys have a good one. Peace.